Howdy again, this is Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and I'm back in the shop here at the Bridgeport Mill, and you may remember that in tips 887, and I'll flash that on the screen right now, hopefully you watched that, but remember that was all about installing this Vivor power feed on the Bridgeport, and I was not satisfied with it, and I did not recommend it, because... Even at the slowest speed, it's a bit too fast. Well, they can, cannot possibly have designed it to do that, so I'm thinking maybe this is a bad unit. And with that in mind, I contacted Vivor and asked if they would send me another one. Magic. And yes, they did send me another one, still in the sealed package. So I'm going to open it right now. Take this one off and put the new one on, although I think I'll bench test it first to see if it runs at a relatively slow speed because the specifications in uh, their website uh, showed from zero to whatever the number was so that it was supposed to go very, very slow. Furthermore, many of you had uh, shown me that your units move very slowly. And you know what? I think they're all made probably by one or two companies over there in China. So let's see if the new one is any better. And I won't go into a great de deal of detail regarding uh, that uh, installation because that's all in 887. This is 888. All right, let's begin. Okay, I think you'll find this interesting. This is the old one, the first one with the ribbon on it. The one that it runs way too fast. This is the one that I just unpacked. And by the way, it was incredibly easy to take this off. Two minutes at the most. And uh, it means that I can put this one back on in about two minutes. So this is going to be a real easy job. But first of all, I'm going to... No, I'll start with this one. So here we are with the new one. Now I'm going to zoom in on this in a second but there is the slowest speed now I better do it now are you that's the slowest speed and then I can really wind it up ah we're getting the wagon wheel effect there John Wayne but anyway it really slows down now let's and I'll leave that on so here's the other one we'll turn that on And I'm going to adjust it to the slowest speed without installing. And that is the slowest speed now. Look at how fast that gear is moving compared to... Well, you know what? That, that really doesn't tell you anything, does it? I can tell here, but the camera does not pick up on it. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. It'll only take a few minutes. And this one, maybe it can be repaired. I don't know. But this is the one that I want to deal with. And I'll put it back on the machine without showing you any of that installation business. You don't need to see that. You can see it in the old one if you're interested. The old video, I mean. Okay, it's only 10 minutes later. And before I button this up, thing up, I want to tell you something. Uh, several weeks ago, I made a whole video on turning down the end of this brass gear here because you may recall that the nut on the end here did not go on all the way. Only maybe to, uh, three threads. And several of you mentioned, well, you ought to face this off. So, look, at, this is the new one that just came yesterday. Notice the length here compared to the length here. So I took off, well, I don't know what it was, but hundred thousands or something like that. And now you will see that once I go ahead and put the collar on here and, and finish up, that we have plenty of threads out here. Be right back. Okay, the reinstallation is complete. Now, first of all, let's look right here, and you can see that the thread comes flush with the nut. So that little uh, job that I did weeks ago on the brass right here, just changed the length of that bushing or the gear is all that it did 
but uh, that's all that problem and if I can find the video clips on that brass job I will put them at the end of this video they may or may not be there I made a whole video on that but then since this was not working out for me I decided not to publish it so if you buy one of these because now I'm recommending this unit you will need to face a little bit off so you can see the difference there between the two and I suppose this is made universally so it will fit many different makes of vertical mills and this of course is a genuine bridge port and I had to remove a little bit of material right there all right now let's test this thing out not to change the subject but observant people will note that the hardens lathe no longer sits there so now I get another workbench which instantly will get filled with stuff but anyway I sold that to a man in Arkansas so that's where it is now and I tell you that thing weighed three or four hundred pounds and they two men had a heck of a job getting that up the stairs and then when we got to the stairs we couldn't get through the door we had to hang that thing by a sky hook while I removed the switch not an easy job. I'm glad we don't have to do that again. But now I, I do like this bench, which I'm going to keep because I got plenty of storage under it. All right, back to the real video. One more thing before we test this out. When I shortened the brass gear here, it caused the ball to be closer to the unit here. Now, it's not touching, but it is close, and that is a pinch point, but it was a pinch point before. So that's something a fellow needs to be careful with, that he wouldn't get his finger in there. But then again, everything about machine tools is dangerous because I could say the same thing up here. Don't get your finger in here. It'll take your finger off. So, you know, but that's just one other thing that a fellow needs to watch for on this machine or any other machine. There's always so many ways of getting injured. But I do have all 10 digits at the age of eight. Oh, look at how wrinkled my hands are. King Tut's hands would look better than that. Okay, this is too good to be true, so let's give her a test run. On, that's the direction, and look at how slowly that moves, especially compared to the other one. And there's quite a bit of torque, even at that slow speed. And then, of course, you can adjust it to about anything you want. Let's go the other way. I'm getting out of the frame. And, of course, this is the rapid driver. Oh, I love it. This is going to be great. Thank you ever so much, Iris and Vivor. Let's take a couple cuts like I did in the other video on some steel. See how that works. Cold roll steel, depth of cut 50,000, so let's try it. Got some oil on it. about the slowest right there, which is too slow. Okay, that's too good to be true. I'm very, very happy. Okay, some of you might have observed that I put the digital readout scale back on the front. I'm absolutely... Uh, <laughs> at a loss without that so there is no place to put the limit switch at this time so I hope to put that on the back side but in order to do that I would have to develop some kind of t-slot more or less like what you see right here and that may happen and if it does I will make a video of that but I make no promise but this really should be mounted and uh, well 
for safety purposes, but you should really never leave the area of the machine when you have the power feed on for safety of yourself and the tooling and the work and the machine. You must have stops. Okay, this of course is the old one with the ribbon on it. This is the new honey. And what I wanted to say right now before I conclude the video, has anyone ever attempted to mount one of these on the knee? Because that would be slicker than it could be if I could make that work, but I think you re really need one made for the knee rather than the crossfeed here or the longitudinal. Let me know because this would work fine even though it's, it's too fast. And one other thing I wanted to say is that in the comments several people said we'll take the bottom off and there's some potentiometers in there. Well you shouldn't have to do that but I may fiddle around with that sometime on my own. I see that there's just two screws here to take that off. So that's a possibility because this unit does work it's just too fast. Again thank you Viver for this free unit here. Remember they did not pay me however this was a gift and I do get 5% if anyone buys these. I now recommend this. I did not recommend it in the previous video. I highly recommend it now and if you're interested look down in the comments and you will see a link and a number for a discount. So check that out if you're interested. It's very uh, moderately priced compared to some of the, the big names that you might have heard of. So I think it was $169 or something in, in that range, not $400. So I think it's a good buy now that we know that the other unit was just defective rather than poor engineering. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Stand by for a couple stills and some footage of me turning down this brass gear to change the length here just slightly. And you may enjoy that. So long. You may not be able to tell where the actual diamond tool is, so let me put some blowing on. Does that show up? Probably not. That was a failure. Well, if you can hear me over the spite mower, what I'm going to do now, again, is just turn this down or face it down, and I have set a stop. See if you can hear that over the mower. Up to that line. I do not have a DRO. I cannot afford one. I'm a poor man. I'm a poor man. I always feel sorry for myself. Must be pretty sickening to hear that all the time. Here's a little trick of the trade. I wrap tape around there so that once my tool actually touches the tape, I know that's as deep as I'm going to go. Prevents me from damaging the tool and or the RV.